there are many incredible men and women who sowed the seeds of the gospel in various parts of the world under trials and difficult circumstances. In this process of laying the foundation of the kingdom of God on earth, many of those divine harvesters encountered untold sufferings, threats, imprisonments, torture, and even death. A warm welcome to all our esteemed viewers, to Faith Builders. In this programme, we are reflecting upon the heavenly patron saint of Ireland, the indomitable Saint Patrick, highlighting his special call, his steadfastness in pursuing it, and his phenomenal achievements. Patrick's triumphant entry into Ireland with the word of God in the fifth century changed the course of the history and destiny of the nation. Let us go through his life, which is an inspirational story of transformation, from slavery to the freedom of Christ, and from atheism to an astute preacher and a champion of the faith. Patrick was born in a well-to-do aristocratic Christian family in Britain in 386 AD. He grew up surrounded by comforts and luxuries. His father, Calpurnius, was a deacon and his grandfather, Petitus, a priest. As a young man, Patrick was greatly influenced by rationalistic and atheistic thoughts. He also became part of a cult which had renounced faith and continued to question Christian teachings. This led him to idol worship and associated rituals in total opposition to the Christian faith he was born into. While he was living this way of life, England was attacked by an army sent by the King of Ireland, Nile. They captured many, including Patrick, and took them to Ireland as prisoners. Thus, Patrick became a victim of isolation and fear as a young teenager, being separated from the security and protection of his own family and people. Patrick wrote about this painful banishment to an alien land in his spiritual autobiography titled Confessions. He wrote, Even before I attained discernment, Prior to my finding the true God, I was forced into Ireland as a slave. I realised that this fate of mine, away from God, was justifiable, and I deserved it. Thus, Patrick's life in Ireland began as a slave. He was auctioned at the slave market. A magician called Milico, who was also the head of the Delaradia clan in the north of Ireland, purchased Patrick. For Patrick, who lived amid wealth, this slavery was eye-opening to reality. He was haunted by the thoughts of his transient and worthless past life of luxury. His life as a slave under the magician was stressful and difficult. Hunger and thirst were alien to him previously, but here food and drink were scarce for him. During this time, the Spirit of God ignited Patrick's inner self to meditate on God's immense love and magnificence. He began to feel great repentance of his turbulent past, where, under the trappings of wealth and social status, he lived in total denial of the boundless love and the mercy of the Heavenly Father. He built up the habit of prayer and meditation after the day's hard work in the field, which helped him to unburden himself. 
he was ordered to be a herdsman of sheep and pigs on a mount. He found happiness in praying, even while at work, on top of the hill and in narrow country lanes, and solace in spending long hours in prayer. He was encouraged by the closeness he felt to God, which empowered him to come to terms with his life of bondage. He testified to this fact even while in captivity. In the sixth year of his slavery, he had a dream at night. He heard a voice saying, Get up, your ship is waiting for you. Collecting his inner strength, he decided to flee. Aiming at the nearest seaport, he trekked about 200 miles, taking several days to reach Berdia port. He located the ship to Britain, but was denied entry. Yet he relied on prayer to good effect, strongly believing in the divine message. Then the captain changed his mind and allowed Patrick to board the ship. Patrick received a princely welcome from his nearest and dearest, but he did not allow the celebrations to go overboard and distract him from his personal bond with God. His heart was craving to share his experience of God with others. After spending years in slavery, he hurried to get home as soon as he docked in Britain. He received a cheerful welcome at home, but he never wanted to go back to his old ways. He had a strong sense of feeling that God was moulding him for a great calling. About this time, Patrick had a vision of the people of Ireland, where he heard a voice saying, O oh, holy young man, please come back and walk with us once again. This led Patrick to realise that his call was to return to Ireland as a missionary. As an essential preparation, he decided to become a priest. He faced serious objections from his family on this decision to go to Oxen to join the seminary. He overcame these obstacles with his prayer and solid belief in the heavenly message. Patrick incessantly prayed for the success of his future mission to Ireland throughout his training. Once ordained as a priest, after 12 years of study, Patrick waited for an opportunity to go back to Ireland. Which unexpectedly arrived at the death of Ireland's Bishop Thaladi. To his utter dismay, Patrick was appointed as the next bishop. Thus, God paved the way for Patrick to realise his cherished ambition of working for the Kingdom of God in Ireland. In total submission to the divine will, revealed to him over the years, Patrick, along with his followers, reached the Irish shores in 432 AD. The very place he ran away from where he was a slave under human captivity a few years ago. This time he returned as a confident and trusted servant of the living God. The ensuing years marked a historic victory for the word of God over pagan beliefs and culture in Ireland. Ireland was a very attractive place with its natural beauty. Irish people in the 5th century worshipped many gods. Patrick was sent as the Apostle of Heaven to this people who practiced many inhuman rituals, 
including human sacrifice to please their gods. He preached fearlessly, with authority and conviction, and proclaimed himself as the real messenger of the one and only true God. Irish blood be shed upon this pagan altar. Patrick despised their gods as fake and outright myths, and demolished the sin-stained altars of human sacrifices. Never again! Patrick's fame as a powerful evangelist and personal witness of God spread far and wide. The local chiefs and religious bigots took offense to his popularity. Yet Patrick continued his mission. Through the devoted and dedicated efforts of Patrick, Christianity took strong roots and began to flourish on Irish soil. Patrick became the bringer of hope and the love of God to the Irish nation. They could not accept a one-time slave who fled their land, coming back to challenge them. God ceased their efforts to attack and eliminate Patrick. He travelled all around Ireland and proclaimed the word of God. Once on the 25th of March, when the Irish people were celebrating their new year, Patrick lit the fire on top of the hill. The tradition was that the new fire was lit by the king. According to the law, it was a blasphemous act, warranting the death penalty. Patrick defended himself by saying that, on our sacred feast of Easter falling on the same day, he could not restrain himself, but had to proclaim Christ as the light of the world. Patrick led his enemies to conversion through signs and miracles. He was called to the king's palace and the guards decided to ambush Patrick on his way. But God helped Patrick to transform himself and his companions temporarily into a flock of wild deer. The agents pounced upon them, only to see a deer with a form roaming across the field. There were many further attempts on Patrick's life, but none of them succeeded. He proclaimed the word of God in the palace as well. Patrick was once given a drink laden with poison, but with the power of God, he could separate the poison from the drink and claim victory over false gods. History testifies that while the king's magician Lucitomy made snowfall, Patrick melted the snow with the sign of the cross to save the crops. Finally, the enemies challenged Patrick to prove the power of his god by sending one of his disciples into fire. Patrick accepted the challenge. He agreed to send his beloved disciple Benin into the fire He was covered with the gown of his adversary Lucitomy, and Patrick's gown was put on Lucitomy. Both rooms were set on fire. After a while, Benin came out of the room unharmed but Lucitomy was nowhere to be seen despite a thorough search. 
the gown he was wearing, which belonged to Patrick, was found intact, with no sign of any fire damage. This made the king realize and accept the true faith, as well as give Patrick permission to preach freely and unhindered. Patrick went on fiercely with great deeds of prayer throughout Ireland until his death. At the end, finishing his calling on this earth, he happily went to receive his eternal crown. Patrick effectively continued his powerful mission by proclaiming the good news, healing the sick and helping the poor. God endowed Patrick with an extraordinary gift of teaching to impart the basics of faith to ordinary people in very simple ways that led to mass conversions. As Patrick became conscious that his final days were approaching, he wrote down his life experiences titled Confessions. He appointed his trusted follower, Benin, as his successor. He spent his last days in solitude, fully immersed in prayer and meditation in preparation for his impending death. It is widely believed that on one night, angels came down from heaven and took his soul away to his eternal abode. His disciples continued with his mission of spreading the light of faith in Ireland, Europe and the world. Patrick is considered one of the most courageous faith campaigners of all time. He was instrumental in eliminating and remoulding the cultural ethos of Ireland and replacing it with the fire of the gospel. The fire of faith he started off in Ireland continues today in different parts of the world. Patrick is a saint who saw Christ in himself, around him and in the whole universe. Let us join St. Patrick in his song of prayer based on his life experience of the Almighty God. Christ be with me and within me, Christ behind me and before, Christ beside me and to with me, Christ to comfort and restore, Christ be As this program of faith builders comes to a close, let us build our church with great faith, like the ones who have gone before us. Thank you for watching, and may God bless you. Christ in resting and in rising, Christ the